The objective of this video is to understand the differences between Microsoft Excel's various file formats. Not only do we want to understand the differences between these formats, but also understand the pros and the cons so we can make the best use of the format depending on the situation. Microsoft Excel supports a variety of file formats to suit different use cases, ranging from simple spreadsheet storage to advanced data interchange and backward compatibility. Understanding the differences between these file types is essential for choosing the right format for your needs, especially in environments that require data sharing, automation, or archival. These are the file extensions for the various file format. And although some of them might not look like Excel file formats like CSV or PDF, those file formats are integral to Excel. So let's look at the pros and cons of each of these. XLSX. This is the default file format in Excel since 2007, and this is based on the OpenOffice XML standard. The pros of using XLSX files, they're highly compatible with modern Excel versions, they have reduced file size, they're safer to use because of lack of macro support, and they support the newer charts and formatting features. The cons, on the other hand, they're not supported by Excel 2003 or earlier without a compatibility pack. And what makes this file safer by not having macros is also a con because they can't contain macros. They're best for everyday use when macros are not required. XLSM files, on the other hand, are similar to XLSX, but they support VBA macros. The pros, they can store and execute macros, and they have all the advantages of XLSX files. The cons, they are slightly larger in file size, and there are potential security risks from untrusted macros. They're best for workbooks that require automation using VBA. The XLS file format, which is a legacy format used between XL97 and 2003. Data stored in this format is stored in a binary format, as opposed to a human readable format. The pros are it's compatible with older versions of Excel and oftentimes smaller for certain data sets. The cons, on the other hand, they lack many of the modern features, they're more prone to corruption, and they're not compressed, so they occupy more space. These are best used for compatibility with older versions of Excel. Now, if you're thinking, why would anybody use the older file format as opposed to the newer file format? Well, I've seen many companies who are still using older files, even in the newer versions of Excel, but they don't realize they're still using the older file format, and they don't understand what they're giving up for that. So let's look at some of the costs of saving a newer version of Excel in the older format. Now, this is by no means a comprehensive list of differences, but it's some of the major structural differences. The limits of Excel, old versus new. In old Excel, we maxed out at 65,000 rows. In newer Excel, just over a million. In old Excel, we had 256 columns, A through IV. In the new version of Excel, we have 16,384 columns, A through XFD. In old Excel, we were limited to 56 colors in the color palette. New Excel has access to 4.3 billion colors. When it comes to conditional formatting, the older versions of Excel only supported three rules per cell, and there were limited formatting options. From 2007 forward, you can have an unlimited number of rules per cell. Plus, we have the inclusion of color scales, icon sets, and data bars. When it comes to formulas and functions, there were much fewer built-in functions in 2003 and earlier than 2007 forward. There are dozens of new functions, especially when you take into account the new dynamic array functions that were introduced around 2020. For tables, 2003 and earlier only supported basic lists, but in 2007 forward, we have fully featured Excel tables that use structured references. These also have managed color schemes and a plethora of other features that everybody should take advantage of. Now the XLSB format. This is the Excel binary workbook that was introduced to Excel in 2007 for performance reasons. Like XLSX files, binary workbooks are stored in a machine language, not the same language as XLS, but machine language nonetheless. The pros of storing the data in this machine language, faster load times, faster save times, the file sizes are smaller, and they support macros. So if you're working with very large data sets that take a long time to load, you might find that by saving them in the XLSB format, your load times will be dramatically reduced. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, well, why wouldn't I just use XLSB if it's going to be faster and it supports macros? Well, there are some cons, and the cons being they're less readable by non-Microsoft tools. So if you're exchanging information freely between Excel and other applications, those applications might not support XLSB files. There could also be security concerns, because you can't tell just by the extension of XLSB whether the file has a macro or not and someone could try to sneak a malicious macro in the system. These are best for large datasets requiring performance optimization. XLTX, or Excel Templates. 
This is the templated version of XLSX files for standard workbooks. By saving a file in the XLTX file format, this prevents accidental overwriting of the file because the file acts as a template. The user is actually opening up a copy of this file when they double click the XLTX file. This ensures consistency across a file that's being reused. The cons? XLTX files cannot contain macros, just like XLSX files. These are best for reusable workbook templates. Now, if you need a template that can also store macros, that's when you'll use the XLTM file format, the XL macro enabled template. So this is just the templated version of an XLSM file. The pros, they enable standardized macro powered spreadsheets, but the cons, they inherit all the macro security concerns of an XLSM file. These are best used for reusable automated templates. The XML format. XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. These are the older XML-based human-readable formats. The pros of this, they are interoperable and they're good for structured data, but the cons are it's an obsolete format that lacks many of the modern features. These XML files will likely result in larger file sizes. They're best used for legacy XML output and data integration. CSV files, comma-separated value files. Now, these are not technically an Excel file format, they're plain text formats with values separated by commas. The pros of CSV, they're incredibly lightweight, they're universally supported, and they're ideal for data exchange. The cons, on the other hand, there's no formatting support, so you lose all the pretty of the file. Formulas are not retained within the CSV file, only the results of those formulas. CSV files only support one sheet at a time, so if you have multiple sheets in an Excel workbook, you'll have to create separate CSV files for each sheet. These are best used for simple data exchange and system integration. This list also applies to tab delimited text files typically saved with a .txt extension. And finally, the PDF format or the portable document format. Again, not an Excel file format per se, but you may wish to use this when creating read-only formats of Excel for sharing purposes. The pros of the PDF format, they're ideal for printing, they preserve all the layout information with none of the underlying formulas. So if you're trying to keep that from being visible, PDF is a great way to do that. The cons, on the other hand, they are not editable in Excel, and you lose all interactivity and formulas. These are best for sharing final print-ready reports. To wrap things up, Here's a summary table of everything that I've covered. Feel free to download this table along with a PDF of all of the details of everything that I've covered in this video. Now that you understand the nuances of all these file formats, you'll be better armed to make the best choice depending on your situation. Thank you for watching and remember at BCTI, the learning never stops.